right, what is up, you beautiful people, and welcome back to another Direct Strike Weekly Brawl. We're joined here by Kaz and Pandatipus. We're playing some Stukov today. Oh my god, let's go for it, boys. Let's get some, let's, let's, we, we have lots of stim here. Oh, I can get a bunker. Oh my god, I should have got a bunker. Oh, I should have got a bunker. There we go, we got a bunker, we got a bunker. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, Brawl modifiers, we have gridlock, so we cannot get to tier 2. But that's okay, because Stukov's got quite a lot of damage here. We're going to get the uh, munitions here. Probably want Broodling Gestation, actually. And then we also have Stop Us. So we started with lots of money, and I just realized, wow, those Hellbats just hard countered me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, boys. Anyways, we just got we just got slaughtered there. I think I need some I need some Explodey Boys here. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Boom, boom. Wait, hold on. I'm supposed to put a bunker here. Hold on. Boom, boom, and then we gotta put the bunker here. And then we just have stim on everything, so everything is gonna be attacking super fast. I think Nova apparently is supposed to be very OP this week because uh, of her ability to snipe things and her initial contact damage. There we go, boom, boom. Uh, hang on, I didn't even think about how BS Alarak could be. Yup, Alarak just is really hard to kill as well. Um, yes. Yes, there we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my broodling gestation here. The Nova Marines. Oh, wait, wait, is it not Nova Marines that are OP? I don't know. We're against Han and Horner here. Oh my God, Han and Horner can sell off though. That is going to be hard for me to deal with. Um, although my bunkers can just power through. Yeah, my bunkers with the stim are just gonna power through here. Oh, there's two Han and Horners. Is that two hundred horners? Oh my god! Wait, this is it the Haka? Uh oh! I should not have uh, gotten that bunker there. But let's see how strong is Alarak. Um, he's got his nuggies. Oh, but all his nuggies got eaten. The Haka's Zerglings are quite strong, though it seems. Probably not versus Lings, though. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Boom, boom! Slam these guys down. Oh man, it is a back to school time. He can't, he can't, you know, it is very soon back to school. I don't know, boys. I, in a way, I'm actually kind of not as excited this time. I don't know. Because um, it feels like there's going to be a lot of stuff for me to do. Uh, and maybe that's the wrong attitude to have towards it, you know? Uh, okay, so I think I do want, do I want, do I want the next tier? I think I do want the next. Wait, wait, where's this bunker going? Uh, there we go. We need the bunkers to destroy the grenade cars. Oh no. Oh no. I can't make my way through these guys. These guys are too tanky. I should probably just get some Explodey Boys, but I don't want to buy Explodey Boys. I want to buy tanks. Because Explodey Boys are, for the most part, kind of useless. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We got, we got our stuff here. But yeah. I was supposed to plan out the year during the summer, but uh, <clears throat> that didn't happen, actually. Uh, so instead, I'm planning out like the week before, essentially. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but I mean it's still a little bit better in the sense that like I kind of have a bit of the stuff already ready I like, can prepare. Oh, there is a second Han and, Han and Horner. Oh man I'm gonna upgrade my infantry weapons and armor because that's essentially what I'm using anyways Second Han and Horner. I think our Nova Marines just too thick. They just power through everything because the stim pack here gives everything healing as well um, I mean I guess Get them boys Get a Marines inside the bunker. There we go, yeah. Didn't think Marines... Didn't think Marines can beat Hellbats. Anything is possible with Stim. Anything is possible with double Stim. Oh my god, Rainer Bio just has to win the game, like, before the 4 minute mark. Which is probably achievable if you buy only Marauders. <laughs> only marauders and no gas i don't know um i'm probably gonna need some diamondbacks or something my air is gonna be terrible against a hunt horner uh although hunt horner does not have a banshee so i'm not going to be a it's not going to be too good there we go we got a grenade card there we go as soon as the hellbats go down the marines just slaughter the grenade cars oh my god it's beautiful make calcified armor in my bunkers here Probably gonna keep getting bunkers. Bunkers with the stim is actually just very, very powerful. Um, and bunkers are pretty, pretty hard to deal with early game unit in general. That is until the bunker breaks. 
Well, not hard to deal with, but it's, it's a lot of health. So it's not like a unit that go just, that goes down easily. Um, so that's that. Oh, we forgot tier two. Oh, we got the knockback wave now. But actually, Hot and Horner might uniquely be actually very good because you can just sell off while your opponents are committed to whatever they built to survive tier one. Uh, the first four minutes. Huh. All right, you know what? I just got to do off the cuff tier list, boys. I've been overthinking tier list. I actually overthought the tier list so much that I didn't do one for last week. <laughs> We got some vanguards coming. Wait, bunkers are 360 now? I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this also, the great equalizer. This also got more expensive. My upgrade to, uh, I mean, I upgrade. This also got gridlocked, sorry. I should say. Uh, is there anything invisible here? No, okay. Just gotta make sure there's nothing invisible. Oh, there's a Dameless Viking. Um... Ooh, we're getting smashed pretty hard here. Um, I wonder if it's because I need more fodder. Well, the fodder itself said yes, so the answer is yes. There we go. I'm gonna get some more fodder units here, but I'll probably need to get some tanks to stack. I don't want to get too many tanks though, because uh, tanks are at the end of the day kind of weak against um, Han and Horner if they decide to start flying. Um, so yeah, let's get some more fodder. Send all those, send out the gladly fighting vehicles. There we go. The gladlies have been deployed. Um, uh, we got a banshee here with the stim. Uncontested. Just blasting her way through everything. Oh, the haka worms have stim as well. That'll be helpful. Um, uh, there we go. We got some fodder on the side. Fodder on the side is going to keep everything there busy. Okay, come on, boys. Let's just power through. Oh, power through. Okay, the bunkers are slowly powering through. Oh, my God. There we go. We made it through. We made it through to help Kaz's wave. But my Marines, are they going to be able to beat the Zerglings? Oh, my God. The Zerglings attack so damn fast. The Haka Zerglings are actually a little fierce. A little, little voracious beasts to fight against this week. Because of the stim, because they do, they they're the thickest zergling of them all, uh, and they do the most damage. Um, the only thing holding them back is like I guess their price. Um, but yeah, they don't have any stims you can buy. I think because the other zerglings you can buy all these different upgrades for them, but the haka ones you can't. But yeah, like with the stim upgrade, I think feel like they're gonna be quite strong. Oh, I'm gonna need a detector. We are gonna need an overseer for that. Actually, no, we're not. We're gonna get the banshees to clean this up here. Get them banshees. There we go. We got a Damos Viking coming in here. May or may not need to uh, get some Diamondbacks or something like that. Actually, I feel like Bunkers is just going to power through everything. There we go. All right. Get them, boys. Why do I never have the money for my master plans? <laughs> Same. What is Kaz's master plan? I don't even know what Kaz is. Ooh, okay. Huge splash there. Ooh. The Hawk about to go down. Ooh. Oh my god. The Vanguard's just smashing through those guys. Damn, okay. I wanna, I'm going to put down some more Gladlies here. I'm going to get a Gas, actually, instead of Tier 3. I don't think it's going to actually help me. I don't know. Getting an Alexander could be okay, but it's like, whatever. All right, boys, power through those impalers. There we go. We got, we got double scan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get an overseer here. Boom. I think I could just keep building bunkers, and we would be probably be okay. We probably would be okay, because bunkers have range, and then we have more jumpy boys coming in here, and they're just jumping all over. And bunkers are a universal unit in the sense that the only thing that's bad that it's bad against is like a sovereign BC. Um, that is actually a very viable threat. <laughs> wow, the Haka just got knocked out real quick there. Oh my god, extra range on our infested marines. Let's go, infested rifle. Let's go. Oh my god, Hellbat's coming in. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not really. I'm really not looking forward to the school year. And I think it's mob. It's probably because of what happened last time, in the sense that I'm like, man, I have to like do that huge grind again. Um. But also, I don't think so, you know? Also, I don't think so, you know? 
Uh, it's just my mind being uh, being scary, boys. Anyways, what happened to all of these guys? How did they lose all that health there? Oh, the Banshees took them out. There we go. All right, boys, get in there. Get in there, boys. You know what? I should just mad lad fourth gas right now. I shouldn't. Or should I? Wait, bunkers are terrible against the Haka. I'm going to get like... I'm going to get thorns into the ground. Unless... Actually, I actually just can't do too much damage to him. Actually, no. The Marines are... The Marines are working them out. Working them down slowly. You know what? I'm just going to mad lad get another gas and just keep slamming down bunkers. I'm going to keep slamming down bunkers until I see something different from Hunt Horner. Then maybe I'll just buy a bunch of Liberators and send them into the fodder pits. There we go. Bam. All right, boys, let's go. Let's go. Units coming in here. Bam. I think one difference is that also this time, I think I'll probably have better like support systems in the sense that um, I, met a, uh, I met a nice group of friends at uh, the place I go bouldering. Um, and so that literally helps take away from like the monotony of it all. Cause like last six months was just like, like when I, when I was teaching for that six months from January to June, I was just like trying to get through all of it basically by myself. And that was, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot after a certain point. I was like, nah, nah. Um, but yeah, I think maybe now it'll be a little easier. So, I mean, there's only, there's only one way to find out, which is, uh, you know, just to get the year started. Gotta set myself up for it nicely. Uh, and, uh, just gotta have fun, I think. That's the most important thing, you know? You can't, uh, you can't let your worst moments convince you to give up, boys. Uh, anyways, what do we have next? We're gonna, we're gonna get some Diamondbacks, maybe? I don't know. Oh, there's a Wraith here. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, somebody stop that thing. I'm surprised the race transition hasn't happened yet. Like rates are pretty pretty brutal, uh, but there are quite a lot of widow mines coming in. Uh, widow mines could be the answer. Uh, well, my detection just went down. I'm just gonna upgrade my infantry weapons then, and we're just gonna totally barrel through this whole place, and then uh, I'm just gonna smash our way through the widow mines. Ultralisk are a really hard counter to bunkers. Um, unfortunately. Damn. The stimmed ultras also attack so fast. It's crazy. They actually have redonkulous damage output. Um, I don't know if I should keep slamming, slamming down bunkers. I probably shouldn't. But also, the bunkers are less vulnerable to Widow Mines. Up to the point that the bunker explodes. Then they're pretty vulnerable to Widow Mines. But until then, until that happens, uh, we're fine. We're totally fine. Um, there we go. Boom. Pandatip is just going to power through here. We got infest structure coming through. Got our aggressive incubation. You know what? Let's get that pneumatized carapace, boys. He going to be flying today. Straight to his death by Deimos Viking. Uh, anyone know why Slayers are still 130 minerals? Uh, Slayers are good. I don't know. Um... Slayer's OP. Slayers are still OP. I don't know. <laughs> they are good when microed. Yeah, because they have that double damage on the blink. Oh, wait, what? One of the guys left. Wait, the Dahaka left. Oh, boy. Well, we have a bunch of rates to deal with. All right. Um, you are only going to cast Ocular Symbiote. Please. Boom. Boom. Okay. Get that enhanced mitochondria. I'm just gonna put Ocular Symbiote on my bunkers. Um uh, and then hopefully that'll that'll do it. Uh, we gotta power through Han and Horner, and this is gonna be kinda tough. Uh there we go. Here, put that on Ocular Symbiote over here. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Han and Horner is really good at cleaning up all these huge swarms, though. Because of all that AOE on the ground that they've got. Mm. Hmm. Mine can kind of deal with it. I can kind of deal with it. 
I think I'm just going to get an Alex. I'm just going to get an Alex and then get a bunch of Liberators and uh, fodder off the Liberators to the Daimos Viking. Oh, you know what? Actually, might might be better. I might fodder off some Infested Banshees instead. Those might do even better. But yeah, you can see here our, our giant wave is coming over here. Just slowly hobbling over. Doing the hobble hobble. Ready to make them gobble gobble. Alright guys, let's go. Let's send them in there. 1,500. Oh yeah, I forgot to micro my brood queen. So that they actually spam... Um, Whatchamacallit. So they actually spam the ocular symbiote. They like cast it once and then they're like, I'm gonna head out. And then I'm just like, I literally got you for the sole purpose of dropping Oculus Symbiote on everything. Um, but yeah. Maybe I could, could put it on a Banshee or something. We've got tanks coming in here. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, I gotta make sure I, I get the Queen to drop Oculus Symbiote. So boom. There we go. There we go. We got three Oculus Symbiotes. Uh... Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those games, boys. And uh, everything's gonna be geared up to take quite a long time. We're gonna get an Ocular Symbiote on there. So now everything's a detector. You can't hide from me. I don't need overseers. That's that's the good thing about Stukov. You don't actually need overseers. <clears throat> you just need your good Ocular Symbiote. There we go. I'll get myself. I like trains. Wait, what? Same. Um, oh yeah, Alex is going to attack super fast, which means he's going to get spawn like giga value. Uh, let's get that. I just realized Crash Lightning's upgrade is the same price as buying a bunker. That stuff better be good, boys. Because if it's not good, it's not... I don't know. I feel like Crash Lightning rarely hits. When it hits, it's pretty good. There we go. Uh, empower didn't work the way I thought it would. Oh. Oh yeah, Ocular Symbiote the Alex, please. There we go. And then boom. I just gotta increase the Alex's armor. There we go. And then uh we can probably go from there. Alright, Alex. Get him. Pull him in. Wait, the Deimos Vikings are too far away. All right, you know what? It's fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna push off of the Alex here. Uh, yo, Alex, get closer, man. He's just like out there chilling against the Deimos Vikings. Oh my god! All right. You know what? I do need do need the infested lips. Oh my god. I'm also trying to work coffee out of my system, even though I literally started co on coffee like two weeks ago again, and I'm just like, Ugh. like I was brewing my own at home, but like, I don't know, the coffee at home kind of hits different, and that's a lot of galleons, uh, that's, that's a lot of galleons, that's a lot of value being generated, but yeah, like coffee at home hits different, I don't know, it, does, it doesn't seem to be, have the same level of caffeine, oh, rip my bunkers there, uh, Put an ocular symbiote on that one. All right, Alex, pull that galleon over. Oh no, Alex is gonna. That galleon is probably gonna survive. Okay. Well, Alex needs a screen of something. Probably a screen of banshees. I'll be honest. A banshee screen is probably better for Alex than uh, a liberator screen, because liberators are armored, so they're gonna go down. They're gonna go down with the with the ship pretty nicely. Uh, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna put Alex down over here, maybe. There we go. Alex got that landing, landing sound here. I'm gonna get braced exoskeleton. I'm gonna level up our weapons here. I wonder if I can put a detector on my banshee. That'd be hilarious. There we go. Put some detection on my stealth units here. There we go. Um, and my banshees still have too much range. Um, I think Alex has grabbed most of the Deimos Vikings here. And the Queens are actually anti-armor, so that's actually pretty good. 
right? Yeah, they're, they're anti-armor, but like not by much. Um, this queen is doing her best though. She's got two kills already. She's a predator, boys. She's eating them. All right, so we got that extra. Ooh, vision range by five, and I like to detect cloaked invisible. Oh wow. Wait, Ocular Symbiote increases vision range by 5? That's crazy. That's actually really good. <clears throat> Alright, let's get some more Banshees up in here. I know, I know it might seem counterintuitive, like you want to get like a Liberator or something, but I think... Uh, the problem is Banshees have too much range, so they don't actually end up tanking for Alex. But they are very powerful like damage dealers, and they're light, so they don't take bonus damage from the Damos Vikings. Which is why I think they're a viable screen. And these guys are crazy. He's flying them right into us. Which means they're just 100% just going to die. Alex got his tentacle on him already, dude. It's over. I'm going to slam some of these Ocular Symbiotes down. Boom. Boom. Yeah, put an Ocular Symbiote on the tank. If the tanks have more range, that actually might be good. Because uh, then they don't have to un-siege. Uh, not enough energy. Preposterous. Oh, wait. I can use this move again. Um, uh, let's go. Let's get them. Get them, bunkers. There we go. The tanks with Ocular Symbiote have detection, and they have longer range. Ocular Symbiote is actually such a highly underrated ability. Um, I feel like it's honestly one of my favorite abilities, like favorite utility abilities. Look at those those tanks with Ocular Symbiote. Oh my God, that actually won the game, boys. Because they had 5 extra vision range, they could capitalize on their 5 extra attack range. Normally, they would have had to move up. Oh my god. Let's go, boys. Every single one of these tanks have Aqua Symbiote, right? One, two, yeah, except for this one. Damn. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I was literally just going off about, man, I love it. It's such a good utility ability. I didn't even do that much damage. Pandatipus just dealt quite a lot. Probably because of just the early game presence and so much stim. But yeah, how much damage did I take, though? Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, Stukov does a lot of damage tanking. Uh, especially, oh wow, that bunker had 50 kills. 51, 68? Yo, 69? Never 69. What about Alex? We've got five kills. Brood Queen's got three kills. So that one time I clicked on her and she had four kill, two kills. That was like two thirds of her kills. Good to know. Well, let's go on to the tier list, boys. All right, and we are back. Let's get right to the tier list, boys. So just a reminder, we got Gridlock. Tier 2 is unavailable until 4 minutes in. Tier 3 is unavailable until 9 minutes in. Uh, so that just prevents early rushing. And then we got Stockpile, where we starts with uh, 400 minerals. Uh, and then we have Homebrew, which starts us off with Perma Stim on everything, as well as some HP regen. So here's how I think the early... I think the early strategy overall is just going to be... You just want to rush down. You just want to have like early power aggro, if possible. Uh, if your commander does not have that, then ideally they would have some sort of thickness early game or some sort of commander like hero unit that they can uh, put down. So here's where I think things stack up. I think low key Stepman is actually S tier for like the first maybe 10 minutes of the game. Uh, Stepman's banelings are ridiculously strong. And you don't have access to Gary, that's true. But everybody is going to be building some sort of marine kind of guy or zergling kind of guy or like hellbat kind of guy. And those guys stack and clump really nicely for a big boom from your banelings. Um, so it's very hard to deal with those un unless you can get like higher tier units essentially, which nobody can get. So I think this week's statement is actually secret OP. You just want to stack break all the way down to your opponent's base. I know they don't benefit from the stim, but they do move faster. Um, and then the only reason why I'm saying is S tier until like nine minutes in is because I think once your opponent starts scaling into better units, um, the stack breaker thing is slightly harder to keep up with. And it doesn't like give any like returns, like it doesn't stack. So it, it relies entirely on smashing your opponent's comp. So that's what I think. I think Stukov actually is one of the commanders who can actually laugh at the stack breaker build and also do very well into basically all the other A tier commanders. So Stukov has bunkers, which like is like a huge HP unit that nobody really has access to, um, like bar like a hero unit. Uh, and Stukov can still do lots of jumpy boys. He has his own banelings that also explode. Uh, his jumpy boys spawn an extra boy after it dies. And he's got the marine bio damage output. So I think Stukov Loki is actually insane this week. Uh, and next, I actually want to say Zagara is pretty good. Don't sleep on Zagara. Zagara's Banelings 
do a lot of damage. And her Zerglings are really cheap, and they have all the beautiful Zergling upgrades that you can get as a, as a Zerg player, including Shredding Claws. Um, that might not sound like a lot, but the Banelings, if you pack it in with like some Zerglings, you will delete any sort of bio wave that's coming at you. Uh, granted, bio waves this week are going to have super attack speed. So I actually think Aether Commanders could also contest in the S rank if the S rank Commanders, I think, are unavailable or are not in your game. So Nova Marines, very powerful, very healthy. I think Nova Marauders are actually the more dangerous one because they have more health and they can slow enemy attack speed and they have initial contact damage so they're going to at least trade one for one like at the very least but they're probably going to trade at least like maybe one for three or four or five uh and so that's i think really the unit to be scared of uh and that also transitions well into late game because nova marauders are quite chunky and so they can act as some heavy meat shields or you can just mix them in you know, mix and match marauders marines right but nova marines are very very devastating uh next we got we got rainer the king of bio ball himself i would say rainer i think his only limiting factor is Huge AoE detonations and enemy hero units. Um, but that's about it. Like he, he can power through basically anything with just a lot of Marauders. Or in, in the case of Alarak, a lot of Marines. Uh, Manx, kind of the same deal. You do also have access to an Aegis Guard early on if you really want to go that route. But I think LMG Boys and Lings would probably do you better. Han and Horner is here because um, the Hellbats of Han and Horner do DOT damage which is better than doing bonus damage to light because that DOT damage is 50 DO it's 50 damage over 2 seconds so that's essentially an extra 25 dps um on everything so they're actually just very good against everything and they have a lot of health so even if your opponents are pushing out armored units those hellbats can still like smash through and the best part is you can sell off all the hellbats you have and just dump a bunch of rates on the field um and uh, stimmed rates will make quick work of everything so there's that too uh and if you decide to keep your formation stimmed han and horner formation is very powerful uh, the only thing holding han and horner back is just like you know the balanced attack speed b tier commanders so three of the b tier commanders have access to heroes that they can like summon on the first sort of turn um, I have Kerrigan up here because Kerrigan is herself the hero um, which will allow you to take lots of damage and I mean, Kerrigan is kind of in the same boat as Zagara, except she doesn't have Banelings. Uh, so I would actually think that Kerrigan might actually be a little worse. Um, but I still think like maybe like Kerrigan with some Queens and a few Raptorlings might be able to stall out to Hydralisk. Once you hit your Hydralisk, I think that would be okay. But they're still not that great against most of the other A-tier threats that you'll probably be facing. Alarak. I think Alarak has some decent matchups, but for the most part... You're, you're gated out of tier 2, which means your destruction wave, which is your ability on Alaric to deal with 50 HP or less spam units that clump up and deal huge amounts of damage, also known as Zerglings and Marines, uh, is unavailable to you. So Alaric is a big struggle uphill for most of the game. Um, and even if you do make it to like the end game, it's still going to be kind of tough. So actually, I might have Alaric rated a little too high up here, I'll be honest. But... but um. If you encounter any of the S or A tier commanders, I think Alarax is like, he's, he's boned. He's just completely boned. Um, you encounter anyone else, though, I think Alarax is still pretty strong. Uh, Dahaka, kind of the same deal. Small Dahaka is pretty powerful. His Zerglings are very potent because they have extra, like, they do 10 damage. Uh, they cost more. They have more health, too. Um, and Ravasaurs are always a nice source of DPS. So I think I think Small Dahaka is okay. But at the end of the day, um, his composition is much more fragile in the tier one compared to all the other bio ball commanders borazun stalkers can go invisible before anyone except alarak can get detection that is probably the reason why borazun would be here um after that it's kind of like a little dicey because everyone just does lots of damage borazun is more known for damage removal but you can do quite well on borazun if you do some efforty micro um as you will see in a, a video coming this week so yeah artanis um zealots spin aoe it's okay dragoons get out attack speed by everything else um yeah, i think you're just kind of sad for the most part like i think you just have to go zealot spam and hope your opponents don't have fire bats or or something similar to it uh if they do then um you actually can't even deal with it, <laughs> I think, because Psy Storm is actually less effective because Stim gives health regen to everybody. Um, and what you really need are Reavers. 
and you don't have those until nine minutes. So I think Artanis actually, maybe Artanis might be D tier. I don't know. His shield might make up for it, but it's going to be a bit of a struggle to put to play as Artanis. Uh, Phoenix adepts at least can kind of hold their own a little bit with the help of some legionaries. Legionaries have quite a lot of health, so it's quite hard to like, actually like chew through them. And with the stim, Caldalus can probably do a little bit of damage before he goes out. But then again, getting Phoenix himself costs 600 minerals, and it's like probably at the five or six minute mark where you'll get him. And you really need the Blendy boy this week because everybody is going to be building Blendy, blendable units. So yeah, Abathur, a um, lot of anti armor. <laughs> like you're going to be up against a lot of anti armor in tier one. Abathur only has armored units in tier one, so that's a big meme. Uh, if you run up against a bunch of Zerglings, I think the Roach Queen comp could be okay. But other than that, I don't know. Avatar like doesn't really scale well either into the stim. Like every like I don't know. You need you just need to spam Roaches. I think I don't know if Queens would really matter. They might like maybe like a few Queens here and there. But I think it's harder to uh to sustain your wave as Avatar this week because everything just hits harder. Kerax tier one is actually a pain. You have two lives on your Zealots. That's the only unit you have access to. And in, when you hit tier 2, what you really want to do is hit tier 3 and get a Colossus. But you can't until 9 minutes. So with Karax, you really got to hope that your team um, can hold it down. Because if they can't, then you might as well just leave the game. That's about it. Like, Karax is still viable if you get past that. Which is why I have him in C tier. In C -tier. Now the D tier, boys. We got we got our boy, Tychus. Um, Tychus does not benefit from the stim as much as your opponents will benefit because everybody's attacking faster. Tychus is only one guy attacking faster. So he's going to be taking a lot more damage. So his extra health really doesn't matter. Um, on top of that, well, Tychus doesn't really care about the, the, the tier locking. But he is going to be taking a lot more damage. So that's bad. Um, you really got to know what you're doing with Tychus. Maybe you can play, play like a serious build with Detonator. But I feel like that's still too slow because Detonator costs like 300. Sirius himself costs 6, 625. You need to sink 925 minerals into that. Maybe you can get a Sirius and a Detonator on your first round because you have extra minerals with Stockpile. But then your next Sirius is going to take a while to get there. So I think it's going to be harder to play Tychus this week. It's easier to just do terribly this week than it is to, go, to, to do well. Swan. Swan's Tier 1 is... I, I don't know. It might actually be on par with Karax's Tier 1, if not worse. Like, like the Hellbats melt. Goliaths melt. And then your tier two is maybe you'll get access to tanks in time to maybe do something, but probably not. Um, because your tanks really need Thors to hold down the front. And those don't come until nine minutes. So I think Swan is just like, just like, oh God, why? Why, why would you play Swan? It, it, it's an ultimate test of bravery this week. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think about the tier list. And yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> the tires let's light some fires Need a light. they picked the wrong fight <laughs> <laughs>